Welcome everybody to a meeting of the Boston Region Metropolitan Planning Organization. I'm David Muller, Secretary Jamie Kessler here. All participants will join the meeting with muted microphones. Please rename yourself to include your first name, last name, and affiliation if you have one. Please do not unmute or mute yourself. To participate in the discussion, please select the raise hand function. Find this by clicking either on the participants button at the bottom of the screen, and a window will pop up with a raise hand button at the bottom, or the reactions button in the toolbar. The chair will then call on participants. If you're on the phone, you can use star nine to raise your hand. If you have any technical difficulties, please contact Hain Kim via the chat box at hkim at ctps.org or call her at 857-702-3678. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Zoom products are compliant with exceptions with the following standards. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1 Level AA Standards and Revised Section 508 Standards. If you require any additional accommodations in order to participate fully in this meeting, please contact Hein Kim at the MPO staff at hkim at ctps.org or 857-702-3678. First time on the agenda is the introductions. Can you please call the roll? MassDOT Chair. This is David Muller. I'm here. MassDOT C2. John Bashad representing Highway Administrator, Jonathan Gulliver. I am here. Thank you. Mass DOT Highway Division. John Romano here. Thank you. Uh, MBTA. Jillian Linnell representing General Manager, Steve Poptek. Thank you. Uh, Massport. Sarah Lee representing Massport. Thank you. MAPC. Allison Felix representing MAPC. Thank you. MBTA Advisory Board. Brian Kane, presence. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Regional Transportation Advisory Council. Leonard Diggins representing the Advisory Council as a member of the MBTA Rider Oversight Committee. Thank you. Uh, City of Boston, BTD. Bill Conroy representing Mayor Wu in the city of Boston. Thank you. Uh, city of Boston, BPDA. Uh, looks like Jim Fitzgerald is still connecting to audio. Okay. Uh, I'll come back. At large, City of Everett. Morning, uh, Jay Monty representing Mayor DeMaria in the city of Everett. Thank you. Uh, at large, City of Newton. David Kozis representing Mayor Ruth Ann Fuller in the city of Newton. Thank you. Uh, at large, Town of Arlington. It's Daniel Amstutz, representing Select Board Chair Len Diggins in the Town of Arlington. Thank you. Um, at large, Town of Brookline. Todd Green, representing Select Board Chair Heather Hamilton in the Town of Brookline. Thank you. Uh, Intercore Committee, City of Somerville. Oh, can somebody unmute Tom Ben, please? All set. Yep. Uh, Tom Bent, City of Somerville, uh, representing Mayor Ballantyne in the inner core. Thank you. Minuteman Advisory Group on Interlocal Coordination, Town of Acton. I'm not seeing Austin at the moment. Okay. Uh, Metro West Regional Collaborative, City of Framingham. Um, I'm not seeing a rep, Metro West rep at the moment. Uh, okay, it's, it, it should be Dennis, uh, Jim Betty. I do see him hang here. I will. Okay. Uh... Great. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, Jim Betty, uh, representing Mayor Siski, City of Framingham and Metro West Region. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, North Shore Task Force, City of Beverly. Darlene Wynn representing the North Shore Task Force and Mayor Cahill. Thank you. North Suburban Planning Council, Town of Burlington. Uh, anyone find Melissa Tentacolis? I know she joined. Sorry, 
Yes, oh. I did join and I was just having trouble with that. Thank you. <laughs> Let me, there we go. Here, present. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, South Shore Coalition, Town of Rockland. Jen Constable, Town of Rockland for the South Shore Coalition. Thank you. Southwest Advisory Planning Committee, Town of Medway. Okay, and Three Rivers Interlocal Council, Town of Norwood, and Ponset River Regional Chamber. Uh, Steve Owen off Tricks Up Region, Town of Norwood. Thank you. Uh, our ex fit, uh, let me go back to City of Boston, BPDA. Looks like Jim is reconnecting, uh, so we okay. need to come back to him later. Okay, I'll go to our ex officio members, uh, Federal Highway Administration. Good morning, Ken Miller, Federal Highway Administration. Thank you. Uh, Federal Transit Administration. Uh, any luck with uh, Jim Fitzgerald, Matt, do you see? I'm not. No, it looks like he dropped from the meeting, I hate to say. Okay, um, uh, that calls the roll, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jonathan. Next item on the agenda is the Chair's report. I do not have one, so we'll go directly to the Executive Director's report. Take it. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and hello, everyone. Um, I wanted to start off today by um, acknowledging that one of the key items today is to ask you to vote to release the draft um, federal fiscal year 2023 to 2027 TIP document for public review. Um, but in particular, I wanted to acknowledge up front that there is some missing information in the draft and the reasons why. Um, we always strive to provide a full draft. We aren't always able to do so. Um, but in this case, there is a very um, special circumstance. We faced some unique challenges due to a disruption that limited our access to our network and our files and our servers over the last month, um, several weeks really, which was caused by external malware. Um, and we've since been engaging in a full investigation and remediation process with cybersecurity experts. So we are approaching full restoration, but at this point, given that um, we are approaching that and, and our investigation has been wrapping up, um, I just wanted to highlight for the board um, that some of the analyses that depended on those files that were on our server could not be completed um, in time to be a part of this draft. So we will be doing our best over the coming weeks to provide you with the missing information, which is primarily chapter six, the equity analysis, as soon as we can. Um, and I just want to emphasize that to us, this part of the TIP is an incredibly important part. And the only reason why we haven't provided it has been due to this pretty unique um, circumstance that we've been facing. Um, so with that, before I talk more about what's going on today, I wanted to provide a couple of staff updates, staffing updates. Um, I am pleased to announce that we've wrapped up one of our um, recruitments and towards the end of the month, we'll be welcoming a new, sorry, towards the end of next month, it's almost May. Um, we'll be welcoming a new administrative coordinator role to support the certification activities team, which is, of course, the team that is the core group of people working on the main um, MPO documents like the TIP, UPWP, and the LRTP. And then the manager for the TIP um, and the communications coordinator positions that have been out, um, that have been posted recently are, are far along, and we hope to be wrapping up very, very soon and give you updates on those staffing changes. Um, we're also expecting to post some more positions soon, some analyst and planning positions. Um, I, I haven't forgotten that one of the board members um, or more than one of the board members had at some point asked about um, bringing a little bit more information to the board about how our staffing plan and our organizational structure is evolving as part of our strategic planning process and just also the normal kind of attrition and retirements that we do experience. So um, I think this might be helpful to come back to at some point after the TIP endorsement um, and as we wrap up this first state fiscal year um, of implementation of the strategic plan. So I just wanted to highlight that. And then I'll also last mention that we had two more significant retires this month in the, the, some of the staff that work on our um, regional travel demand modeling work. And that was Ed Bromage and Sanjay Call. So it's always um, a big impact to lose very long tenured staff. Well, of course, we celebrate their next stage um, in their in their life, but we are also proactively planning around um, how we move forward as an agency as we see those retirements happen. And so those are my staffing updates, which again, always happy to come back to any questions on those. Um, I have one outreach highlight. Um, the Transit Working Group hosted a coffee chat yesterday, um, April 27th on um, school transit. So if you're interested in that, the recording will be on the MPO YouTube channel soon. And you can also now um, put in your calendars if you'd like. 
save the date for the next transit working group quarterly meeting, which will be on May 31st at 1 p.m. And more information on that will follow soon. Um, so those are the sort of general updates back to today's meeting. Um, I already mentioned that today um, you will be asked to vote to release the public review draft of the federal fiscal year 23 to 27 TIF. There will also be two amendments, one to endorse that you've previously discussed and one new one to release for public review related to the 22 to 26 TIF, the current TIF. Um, Matt Genova will talk about those in, in detail as he always does, but just as a brief preview to try to keep everybody um, kind of straight with, with which amendments are what. Um, amendment three, you'll be asked to endorse. Um, that was voted out for review on March 31st. And that was um, the, um, the process of removing the Green Line extension um, funding and adding the Mafa Way and the Mystic Avenue um, project funding into the federal fiscal year 22 tip year. And then amendment five, which is new what we'll discuss today um, to release for public review includes um, really program-wide changes for the MBTA, which align it with the um, MBTA's um, uh, tip. So it'll include also the addition of the MPO funded projects, the stations and winds in Forest Hills, um, and then also a bus replacement project um, for CADA that is related to CADA's tip. And then there will also be another adjustment, a second adjustment um, to endorse for this current tip, 22 to 26. And just as a reminder, an adjustment is more of an administrative modification and an adjustment doesn't raise to the level that it crosses the threshold into being an amendment which requires um, 21 day public review period. Adjustments do not require that 21 day public review period so you can vote on it um, in one meeting. And this one will um, focus on some funding source adjustments for MWRTA projects. Um, after those, you will also hear today from Drashti Joshi on the NPO's trip generation rate research work, where we looked at how we are estimating the trips that people make when there's new development and how accurate those estimates have been in some specific Massachusetts examples. Um, I know many of us are excited um, about this work, and if you, if you aren't, I genu genuinely believe that you should be because trip estimation is an important part of the the MIPA and NEPA processes that inform um, mitigation strategies in the transportation system and how we negotiate those with developers. And then those in turn have significant impact on travel behavior. So it's really important that we're doing that work well and being as accurate as we can. And following her um, presentation, you will also hear about a new work scope that will look at the next stage um, that will be addressing the next stage in this research and looking at the effects of parking constraints in this process. And then finally today, um, we will also have a presentation of one of the um, federal fiscal year 21 sub-regional priority roadway studies, which focused on Grove Street um, in Braintree. Um, moving on to the next meeting. The next one um, would be scheduled for May 5th, but without the board's objection, we intend to cancel that meeting on May 5th. Um, there will still be ANF and I believe likely UPWP committee meetings on May 5th. Um, so please, if you are part of those committees, hold that time in your calendar still. And then the next MPO meeting itself would be scheduled for May 26th. And that will include the vote for endorsement of the 23 to 27 tip that would be hopefully released today for public review, among other items, of course. Um, and then Mr. Chair, the last item I have is that between now and that next meeting and later in May, I will be attending the um, AMPO, which is the Association of MPOs, Planning Tools and Training Symposium in Florida. Um, and I will be at one of those events in person for the first time at, um, and also as the first time as a board member on AMPO. And I've been working with AMPO staff on some of the agenda setting for what will be kind of a special dedicated workshop session with the AMPO board, including me and some of the, and, and the policy and technical committees that serve AMPO to really dig into the bipartisan infrastructure law implications for MPOs across the nation. And so I'll happily, you know, kind of report back as I um, engage in that in that process with the AMPO board and committee members. And that, Mr. Chair, is all I have. Sorry, that was a lot, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tegan. Any questions for Tegan? Tom Bitt. Tegan, sorry. Uh, what's what's the date of the uh, next MPO meeting? I, I didn't catch that. Uh, I, with all that other information, I'm shocked. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> May 26th. Um, okay. But again, if you participate in any of the committee meetings, we will have committee meetings on May 5th, but the next MPO meeting is May 26th. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Seeing none, the next item on the agenda is public comment. If you'd like to make a comment. Uh, David, if I, Mr. Chair, if I could uh, just, we have two MPO board members who have attended. I just was hoping to call them to the roll first. Sure, go ahead, John. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, City of Boston, BPDA. Hi, sorry, I'm um, having technical difficulties, but um, Jim Fitzgerald with the BPDA representing uh, Mayor Wu in the City of Boston, thanks. Thank you, and uh, Southwest Advisory Planning Committee, Town of Medway. Town of Medway, Peter Pellets here. Thank you, uh, that calls the roll, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jonathan. We're now up to public comments. If you'd like to make a comment at this time, please raise your hand. And first we will call on Mayor Lungo Cohen. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be I'll be brief, but I appreciate you taking me um, first because I have another um, speaking engagement in a few minutes. I, I just want to please ask that you include the environmental impact review funding for phase two of the Green Line extension project to Route 16 Mystic Valley Parkway stop, um, which would serve a number of environmental justice communities facing intense traffic congestion. This was promised to us in the MPO back in 2016, and we beg of you to include that this in the current TIP agreement for 2022 to 2026. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Next up is Senator Pat Jalen. Hi, and thank you for the chance to speak today about Amendment 3. Uh, I'm Pat Jellen. I'm Senator for Medford, Somerville, and parts of Cambridge and Winchester. This is an important moment for Somerville and especially for Medford and Arlington. Uh, as you've heard from the mayor of Medford, uh, and we'll also see in your letter from all of the legislators in this area, this further extension of the Green Line to Route 16 truly unlocks substantial economic and transit access for these communities. Uh, GLX phase one has increased transit access to thousands of residents in Somerville, but only a small portion of Medford is served by the stations that it's created or that it's creating. Um, this final station, as you've heard, was part of the preferred alternative for the GLX and it's critical for Medford and Arlington to see, to see substantial improvements to transit access. Thank you for your continuous support of this final stop of the GLX and for your ongoing attention. I hope we can continue to work together quickly to find the financial means to complete this long made promise to extend to Route 16. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Adam Chapdelaine. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Adam Chapdelaine, town manager in Arlington here to echo the comments of, um, of the mayor and the senator, and I'll be very brief, but Arlington is very supportive of moving forward with the environmental impact, uh, environmental review for phase two of the GLX to Route 16. It would dramatically benefit uh, many residents in Medford, Somerville, and of course, in my interest, Arlington. I know the MPO over the years has done great work to see the GLX come to fruition um, with the, the first stations opening just recently. Uh, but we'd love to see a favorable vote in, uh, in Amendment 3 to be able to move forward and eventually get the Green Line extended out through 16. So thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Alex Train. Good morning, members of uh, the committee. On behalf of the City of Chelsea, uh, City Manager Thomas Ambrosino, I'm pleased to provide a uh, update on the City of Chelsea's Pearl and Park Reconstruction Project. And on behalf of the city manager, we respectfully urge the committee approve the funding that's proposed for the project in the federal fiscal year 27 uh, tip. Uh, the Pearl and Park Street corridor uh, underpins the city's central business district. Uh, this is a downtown that has over 120 minority owned small businesses, merchants and other civic institutions. The project area abuts densely settled environmental justice neighborhoods, and supports multiple MBTA key bus routes, including the Route 111, 116, and 117 that 
combined serve over 24,000 riders each day. Uh, the existing conditions of the corridor warrant comprehensive reconstruction. Uh, the corridor is encompassed by a highway safety improvement crash cluster uh, that has resulted in a significant number of crashes involving vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Furthermore, serving as a key school walking route uh, to our early learning center, uh, the corridor presents hazards for working families that utilize the project area in order to take their children to childcare and school uh, each morning. Um, the project is going to be an effective means to address these chronic safety issues while unlocking economic development in a minority uh, population of the, the downtown. Furthermore, we see the project as having immense benefits for public transportation. Uh, right now, the project area is a major choke point for the Route 111, 116, and 117, causing significant congestion and delays with those routes. That congestion compounds air pollution that affects our densely settled environmental justice neighborhoods and affects the livelihoods of transit dependent populations that rely on the bus each day in Chelsea. Uh, so upon completion, this comprehensive reconstruction project would have a multitude of benefits for minority owned small businesses, environmental justice residents, and working families in Chelsea. And we respectfully urge that the committee uh, vote favorably upon this project. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Todd Baldwin. Thank you very much. My name is Todd Baldwin. I'm the town engineer for Sargas. I would like to speak on behalf of projects one, uh, 61999 and 61, uh, 610 This is a uh, the Revere Sargas Route 1 North widening projects. Uh, municipalities have met with uh, MassDOT this week uh, to move this project forward. And MassDOT is currently arranging for an official scoping meeting for both projects to be happening in May. Uh, MassDOT has expressed interest in moving these projects forward. I uh, asked the board to keep these projects in mind and to consider funding them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brad Rawson. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and through you to the board members. Thank you for all of the dialogue that you all engaged in at our last meeting regarding project number 607670, the superstructure replacement for Moth Away and Mystic Avenue on the Boston Somerville line. As board members will recall, we had some discussion about fine details of design that can take this proposed project from a replace in kind highway structure replacement to a street design that is more consistent with adopted mass DOT and MPO and local policy. Most specifically, identifying one of four current lanes in the same direction westbound on Route 38 Mystic Avenue to be reallocated for dedicated on street bus facilities. There are currently four MBTA bus services that leave Sullivan Square 60 times each day, Mr. Chair. Route 95, the key environmental justice bus route serving portions of Somerville, Medford, and Arlington, as well as Route 89, Route 101, and Route 90. All four of those bus routes experience unacceptable delays given regional congestion coming out of Sullivan Square. The city of Somerville's position is that our partners at Mass DOT should encourage a design that allows for dedicated on-street bus lanes. One of those four westbound lanes can and should be directed for MBTA bus facilities. At this time, board members should know that the city of Somerville has been unsuccessful in gaining that sort of assurance for this project. Because this board has asked for that type of information, we thought that it was an important opportunity to spotlight this issue and seek board and agency commitments to be consistent with our adopted climate equity and congestion relief policies through this important project that the MPO has endorsed in its preferred scenario. I'd be happy to answer questions as they come up, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up is Ken Krauss. Thank you very much, Ken Krauss, uh, Metro resident and um, former participant in the uh, Green Line Extension Community Working Group. Um, 
I expressed this in my written comments that you received, but I just wanted to, to inform perhaps people who are new to the board that the Green Line Extension uh, Environmental Impact Study for Phase 2 was something that this board required and specifically requested back in 2016 when it uh, voted uh, to reprogram funds for the Phase 2 uh, extension to Phase 1. And I think it's important um, really for the credibility of this esteemed process that the board um, make sure that the Mass DOT officials fulfill the obligation uh, before we close the books on GLX phase one. Um, the uh, GLX phase one portion was able to continue because the $158 million for phase two was reprogrammed to phase one, and we're, de we're delighted that, that that happened. But uh, as a condition of that reprogramming, again, the MPO insisted that MassDOT uh, commit to fulfilling its uh, environmental impact review for phase two, and that, that remains unfinished. So um, I would ask that as a, as a condition of today's vote, as the green line funding for phase one is removed, that again, at the MPO, uh, insist that Mass DOT fulfill the commitment that we're still um, waiting to see um, is done from the MPO's action in 2016. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maura Carroll. I'm sorry, I can't see the full name. <laughs> Maura mm -hmm. Carroll, yes, there you go. Yes, um, sorry, I'm having trouble with my uh, video, but um... I, oh, there it is. So I would just like to say um, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about the um, project 610666, the Swampscott Rail Trail. And I just would like to ask the board to just pay some close attention in the next few weeks during the public comment period to just some letters that will be coming in. We still feel there are many issues that have not been addressed with it, including the land ownership and environmental issues among some. But I just wanted to call that attention to the letters. We're a little bit late getting them out this year. Time got away from us, but I did want to mention they are coming. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Others, any other comments at this time? Seeing none, during the meeting, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we will call on you. Next item on the agenda. Apologies, everyone. It looks like we lost David Muller for a moment. Derek? I'm sorry, Lynn. Hold on. Derek Kravat has now raised his hand. I think we're all having computer issues in, in the building. Derek, are you available? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Excellent. Um, just wanted to say that the Unified Planning Work Program Committee, uh, which I am the chair of, met this morning. Um, began discussing the universe of proposed studies for the federal fiscal year 2023 UPWP. Um, studies being discussed by the committee are discrete studies in the areas of active transportation, roadway and multimodal mobility, transit and transit equity. Uh, we do plan to meet a few more times over the next month or two to finalize the recommended list of, of UPWP funded studies for fiscal year 2023. Um, the next meeting, I think we actually decided will be held on May 12th due to a couple of conflicts um, on May 5th. Um, so I'm working with CTPS to finalize the timing of that. Although it'll likely be at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And we'll keep members updated as we finalize that. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Any questions from the members for Derek? Seeing none, we'll now go to the Regional Transportation Advisory Council report. Lynn? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I have some really horrible lighting here, so I'm just gonna go with the picture. Uh, uh, so um, we have not had a meeting since our last um, uh, MPO meeting here, uh, but uh, next Wednesday, uh, we will be doing our 3C uh, review of, of the, the draft tip, and we encourage anyone who wants to participate in that to um, join us as part of our charge as the advisory council. And um, on the following Wednesday, the 11th, we, we will be um, looking at the UPWP universe. And uh, I'll, I have to say it's, a, it's an impressive universe. So please feel free to join us on that day for that conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And Brian Kane, I see you have your hand up. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I just got kicked off when you called this. <laughs> question, so um, if it was brought up, uh, the ANF committee will meet on May 5th and uh, all members are invited to attend and encouraged. We will begin the process of discussing the, uh, the operations plan for MPO staff. So something that uh, touches uh, all members and uh, everyone's encouraged to attend and lend their voice. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the MPO minutes of March 17th. Can I get a motion and a second from a member to approve the minutes and please state your name for the record when making the motion. Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz, uh, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Brian Kane. I second that motion, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Motion to have a second. Are there any comments, changes, questions, or suggestions? Ken Miller, you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just uh, on page 14, uh, third paragraph, last sentence, it says, uh, uh, presuming that the minutes are correct, I apparently misspoke. It says that cost per point awarded during the TIP process is a measure of cost effectiveness. That's true. However, however uh, because the TIP scoring system is not uh, does not scale based on project size, larger projects will appear to have higher cost effectiveness than smaller projects. I think it's actually the opposite. Correct. Uh, so uh, so so I apparently must misspoke. So that should say. Uh, smaller projects will appear to have higher cost effectiveness, or conversely, <laughs> larger projects will appear to have lower cost effectiveness, whichever way you want to do it. Thank you, Ken. With that correction so noted, can I get a, a please call the roll on the minutes? David Muller? Yes. John Bouchard? John Bouchard, yes. John Romano? John Romano. Yes. Jillian Linnell. Okay, go ahead. Jillian Linnell, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Allison Felix. Allison Felix, abstain. Brian Kane. Kane, yes. Leonard Diggins. Leonard Dickens, yes. Bill Conroy? Bill Conroy, yes. Jim Fitzgerald? Sure, yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Jay Monty? Jay Monty, yes. David, David Kozis? David Kozis, yes. Daniel Amstutz? In Lampstutz, yes. Todd Corain? Todd Corain, yes. Tom Bent? Tom Bent, yes. Dennis Giambetti? Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn? Darlene Wynn, yes. Melissa Tentacolis? Melissa, yes. Jennifer Constable? Jennifer Constable, yes. Peter Pelletier? Peter Pelletier, yes. And Steve Olenoff? Steve Olenoff, yes. Motion carries, Mr. Chair. Thank you, John. Next item on the agenda is an action item on the FFY 22 to 26 Transportation Improvement Program, Amendment Number 3, matching over. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Genova, and I manage the Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP, on behalf of the Boston Region MPO. Uh, I've got a handful of items for you today, uh, four items to be precise, so uh, please bear with me through the next, uh, the next several presentations here. Um, but for starters, I'll be discussing Amendment 3 to the Federal Fiscal Years 2022 through 26 TIP. 
Um, and before we start, uh, I do want to note that summary tables for all of the amendments and adjustments that we'll be discussing today are available on the MPO meeting calendar for your reference. So Amendment 3 uh, proposes changes to both the MPO's Regional Target Program and MassDOT's Statewide Highway Program. Uh, these changes are all in federal fiscal year 2022, which is the current fiscal year. Amendment 3 proposes the removal of the Green Line Extension Project from the MPO's 2022 TIP. Uh, as a reminder, 2022 would have been the sixth and final year of the MPO's funding commitment to GLX. Uh, these funds were no longer needed to close out the project. Uh, however, so Amendment 3 proposes returning those funds to the MPO. Um, and the, Amendment 3 from there also proposes the addition of the bridge replacement project on Moffa Way and Mystic Avenue in Boston. And this is at the, the edge of Boston and Somerville uh, in the Sullivan Square area. Uh, and that project is proposed um, for funding through both the MPO's regional target program and then also through MassDOT's statewide highway program. I want to get into the specifics a little bit more here. Amendment 3 proposes that roughly $27.1 million in 2022 funding be returned to the MPO from the Green Line Extension Project. Uh, these funds are then proposed for reallocation to the superstructure replacement project on Moffa Way and Mystic Avenue in Boston. The total cost for this project is roughly $65 million. The remainder of the Moffa Way and Mystic Avenue project is proposed to be funded using a combination of MPO and state funds. These additional MPO funds are surplus 2022 funds from the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, so as we've talked about in past meetings, these 2022 funds became available back in March with the signing of the 2022 Appropriations Act, which allows the funds that were authorized through the bipartisan infrastructure law last fall to actually be spent in 2022. Uh, and this project, so while it's primarily a bridge replacement project, work also includes expanded sidewalks, the installation of protected bicycle lanes on Moffa Way, and the installation of buffered bicycle lanes on Mystic Avenue, among other multimodal improvements. Uh, the project will preserve and enhance critical connections between East Somerville, Sullivan Square, and Assembly Square. So Amendment 3 was released for a 21-day public comment period after a vote by this board to do so back on March 31st. The public comment period for Amendment 3 closed yesterday, uh, April 27th, and seven comment letters were submitted on the proposed changes. Uh, these comment letters have been posted to the MPO meeting calendar under today's date for your review. Um, and you heard a little bit about this project earlier during the public comment period. So several of the folks who commented today um, also submitted comment letters. So when you review the comments online, you'll notice that comments were submitted by Adam Chapdelaine, the town manager of Arlington, a state legislative delegation, including representatives Barber, Garbley, Rogers, and Donato, and Senators Jellin and Friedman, the Conservation Law Foundation, Ellen Reisner of the Somerville Transportation Equity Partnership, and Medford res residents Elizabeth Vale, Ken Krause, and John Elliott. And again, you heard from a handful of those folks earlier today during the public comment period, in addition to others. Uh, and each of these letters really covers some of the topics that you've already heard, um, which is the reallocation of the 2022 MPO funding away from the Green Line Extension Project. While many of the letters express gratitude to the MPO for its ongoing support of the existing phase one of GLX, the commenters collectively request that the MPO work with the MBTA and MassDOT to find a way to move forward with phase two of the Green Line extension to Route 16. Specifically, some of the letters request that funding be allocated to the planning and permitting of phase two during this TIP cycle, with the scope of work finalized by this September in partnership with regional stakeholders. Some of the letters further note that this project was previously allocated to MPO funds uh, before those funds were repurposed in support of GLX phase one, and that constructing GLX phase two remains a part of the state's Clean Air Act commitments that are remaining from the big dig. Um, so today, staff's request is that this board um, consider whether or not to endorse Amendment 3 after consideration of these public comments, uh, and that's all I have on Amendment 3, so I'll turn it back over to the chair for questions and a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Questions for Matt? Seeing none. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the, oh, Steve Olinoff, are you, do you have a question or are you making a motion? Well, I, I like to make a motion. I mean, we just heard from a whole lot of people and got a lot of comments about uh, this funding should instead 
be going to the environmental process for the uh, phase two of the Green Line extension. So it would now be the appropriate time for me to make a motion to do that. Well, do you know how much money you want to do? And, and, and well, yeah, do you, I, I don't wanna... know that anyone has said how much money. Uh, so that's a question, but, but I'll be happy to make a motion at this point to, uh, at this point, I have to say all of that that money, but I, I don't know if you can give me any better information about how much uh, would be good, then I'll go with that. But otherwise, I'll make a uh, I'll make a motion to that this money be uh, uh, designated for uh, continuation of the environmental process for phase two of the Green Line extension. Okay, and and, and not fund what? Well, so that would remove that funding for where it's going now, which would be the uh, in uh, you know that construction project. Wait a minute, get up. Matt, away. Matt, Matt, help us here. Yes. Yeah, the bridge replacement project on Mothaway and Mystic Avenue in Boston. Right. Okay. So you want to make a motion? How much money is it, Matt? Um, so 27, roughly $27.1 million has been, um, I'm going to pull up the exact number. Um, so $27,116,883 is what we have um, reallocated away from the Green Line Extension Project to the Superstructure Replacement Project. Um, that's Project uh, 607670 in Boston. And so that $27.1 million is included in that Moffway and Mystic Avenue project, as is approximately $20 million in other MPO funds that are separate from the Green Line Extension funds. Uh, and then there's also a mass stock contribution of roughly $18.2 million. So I, I will say I'll make that motion at this time for that amount of money, but I am willing to amend that motion if someone comes up with a more reasonable or you know a, a better amount, because I see a lot of the hands are raised. All right, so we have a motion on the table to reallocate the $27 million from Mahaway to GLX Route 16. Is there a second? If you have your hand up for a comment, please take it down so I can see if we have a second. Otherwise, I'll call on any one of you for a second. Jay Monty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, um, you know, first I want to say I, I appreciate everybody's um, enthusiasm for the Green Line extension. It, it is a commitment that this MPO did make and, and should follow through, uh, but I, I can't support the motion to um, defund MAFA way in order to do that. Uh, the funds for the Green Line should be coming from um, other, other places, not necessarily the MPO. And um, yeah, I just want to echo Brad Rossum's comments earlier that, um, you know, we, we, we should be looking at MAFA way as, as a critical transit uh, piece of infrastructure, um, just like the Green Line. Um, but it, it needs to be done, um, needs to be funded, and needs to be uh, constructed in a way that is uh, transit um, accessible. Thank you. Okay. I'm still waiting to see if I have a second. Uh, Lynn Diggins, are you are you seconding this motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm seconding it for the sake of, of discussion and, and so that it does get a vote. Uh, and, and although me, I am not going to support it in its current form, and so since you were asking only for seconds, I'm going to put my hand down and then put it back up so that I can be a part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Motion having been made and seconded. Please just go ahead, Lynn. We're debating it now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, so I, mean, I, I agree with um, Jay that I, mean, I, I want to keep the funds there I mean, for um, off away. I, mean, I think it has a big transit um, component to it that I support. I mean, uh, uh, and I'd like to also um, echo Mr. Rawson's comment about uh, we should figure out some way to get a commitment I mean, to um, enhancing transit, I mean, especially with respect to um, bus priority. Uh, and, and, and so I'd like to have a discussion about that too. Uh, and, and also what I hear a lot of the advocates be for the environmental impact statement saying is that me MassDOT should maintain its commitment. And so I think we can work it out me so that we get the money to do that me from MassDOT, me to preserve these funds, me 
that we've dedicated to Moffa Way because those monies will be used right away this year. And I think the benefits that we see we'll get from that I mean, are by definition much more immediate. I mean, and so with respect to the GLX phase two, I mean, that's a bigger conversation. I'd love to get all of the state um, representatives and senators I mean, who sent us letters in on that conversation I mean, to see what we can do to get the state to really commit I me mean, to GLX two and make the environmental impact statement more than just a step that has no guaranteed second step after it. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Len. Brian Kane. Uh, thank you. Um, so I, I actually have a have a, mo a privilege motion, if I might, Mr. Chair, to ask you to rule on. Uh, I wasn't able to raise my hand before Mr. Olenoff made his motion when you asked if there were questions. So I guess my, my privilege uh, motion is that we revert to that original um, part of the uh, of where we were um, and, and hold this motion in abeyance because there are several questions and comments that I was trying to make with respect to uh, what Mr. Genova said. So are your, are your questions and comments, let me ask you a question. Are your questions and comments about this issue or about other issues related to the, the TIP amendment? They're germane to the TIP amendment, but not necessarily to the motion on the table. And I guess okay. I'm asking as a matter of privilege if we can revert to that because I was trying to use the raise hand function, but wasn't able to when you asked if there are questions or comments. So, um, so sure, Brian, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. We, we all have to sort of adjust on the fly for these. Sure, uh, I guess. Internet just to, so, yeah. so go ahead and, and we will, we will get to Steve's, Steve's motion is, is pending. We will get to it. Go ahead, Brian. Okay, thank you. I guess um, with, with respect to um, the questions of Mafaway and, uh, and, and that project, I had a question about, um, and, and maybe this is for you, David, or, or maybe uh, John Bouchard, about Mass Dot's approach to bus priority, uh, bus priority lanes, transit signal prioritization, and other such treatments, including, um, I guess I would add, uh, bicycle accommodations. Is it, uh, is it Mass Dot's, um, 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 what's the word? Does Mass Dot include these things as a, as a matter of, of sort of a right? Uh, and and are, why are these not baked into the design? And why are these not included in uh, the proposal for Mafaway that was uh, just presented? That's my question. John Bouchard, can you answer that? I guess I can make an attempt. Thanks, John. Um, <laughs> you know, um, Brian, w as we develop projects, we look at what the you know where the proponents are coming from, whether our whether Mass Dot uh, or from a community, and we go to a public process to to identify the elements of the project. When we're looking at state of good repair, then we're trying to maintain and our existing system and then what in you know improvements or enhancements we can make to a state of good repair to address those types of issues but it's part of our public process to identify um uh bus prioritization and in in multimodal connectivity and in complete streets and all users so it, you know it it's part of the development of, of the project and it's not right out of the gate that this is what we're doing. It's, it's we're usually doing a state of good repair. We have a, uh, an asset that needs to be addressed and then we start a public process to initiate that. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's prioritization that we're gonna do something that's a short-term, I wanna call it a Band-Aid, but it's a short-term preservation type project to get us over a hump until we can do a much more extensive, um, you know, uh, infrastructure investment, replacement, enhancement, et cetera. And, um, you know, the, the work that, you know, that I presented a couple of weeks ago when we were discussing Mafa Way is that, you know, with the work in Sullivan Square and North Washington Street and um, other areas, you know, on the Chelsea Curves Route 1, uh, you know, projects to the north, as those, we, we, 
we just could not embark on all of the projects at the same time or no one would be able to get in to the city from the north. So it was a timing issue. So as we're trying to wrap up some of those projects, you know, Moffaway becomes a priority and we have worked with the T uh, in the, you know, the chief engineer's office on, and bus, um, bus rerouting. So that way it's not going to be a five to 10 year construction because of the, the need for bus routing to uh, facilitate construction. So, you know, we're working through those details to issue this as a, uh, a project with the fiscal 22 money that was available uh, that we, you know, proposed with the, uh, with the Boston MPO just, uh, you know, three or four weeks ago. And I'm not sure I answered everything well, there, but I, I just tried to lay it out there. No, I appreciate that, John. And, and obviously, uh, you know, it's tough to do this stuff on the fly. And, and I appreciate the difficulty uh, you and the districts have in trying to coordinate um, all of this. I guess I would just suggest, Mr. Chairman, that um, the the demand, or I shouldn't say demand, the request for bus priority um, pro uh, enhancements is certainly something that I'm hearing the communities unanimously um, advocate for. And, and so I guess I would suggest that as part of the public process, it it it, it, is, it is there and it was there. And I guess I would suggest or, or somehow request, and I don't know how to do this. Um, so, the, you know, this is, we're, we're asking to move 47 million uh, from GLX um, and, the, and the total Moffaway project is 65. Um, you know, can we bump that up by, you know, a, a set amount of money uh, to include these bus treatments? Uh, I know the T has money in its CIP that it might be able to move. Uh, and I, I just think that we shouldn't let this opportunity pass us by. And, and I appreciate you uh, muddling through with me as we try to figure this out. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. So any, so let, now I'm, I'm not sure whether to go back to Steve Olinoff's motion or whether people want to have a discussion on Moth Away first. So I'm just going to call on people and at some point we will take a vote on Steve, Bo Steve Olinoff's motion. So I will call on people who haven't spoken first and then call on others who may want to speak a second time, okay? Jim Fitzgerald. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to clarify a couple of things. Um, you know, Mafa Way does have a bus lane uh, for entering into Sullivan Square. I think as Brad Rawson noted, it's the Mystic Ave Bridge um, that I think we're hoping to work with MassDOT on to get one of those lanes as kind of designed as a bus only lane and a queue jump lane for approaching that intersection as the bridge comes um, over the tracks and into Somerville. So we're hoping to work with and get that um, element integrated into the design, which we think can can probably easily get fitted into that design. So, um, and then as Jay said, you know, clearly strongly support Greenland extension, um, but, you know, I think these capital funds would be better used for a capital project and both these bridges, I think are critical to the the sequencing of both Rutherford and McGrath, and I think they need to get done um, in advance of those projects, which um, are already, as, as everyone knows, have, have been delayed a little bit. Um, so I think if we can get the programming of the Mystic Ave Bridge right, I think um, you know the cities will be um, satisfied. And, and again, getting these bridges done from a construction management standpoint is critical to these other large projects that uh, we've always supported. So thank you. Thank you. Daniel Amstutz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I guess like uh, Jim, I'll, I'll talk sort of about both for a moment, but I will just say as one of the communities that submitted a letter comment about the Green Line extension, I think our intent was, was not really to try to remove or, or to move all of the funding um, onto Green Line Extension Phase Two, or take it away from Mafa Way, but understanding that there has been a commitment made to the Green Line Extension Phase Two and the Environmental Review, and uh, you know very strongly would like to um, get information on when that is going to happen and the scope of work for for when that is going to occur. So that's um, you know, our concern about moving the money is more about you know, what's gonna happen next and where is the money going to come from for the uh, environmental review, whether it is from uh, the MPO or, or from MassDOT. And, and again, in terms of Malfoy, I agree with the previous comments uh, supporting bus priority. Um, 
you know, four bus routes is quite significant. It's right next to Sullivan Square. The, you know, there's bus network redesign going on with the T. So it makes a lot of sense, especially if we're you know, putting over $40 million towards this project that, um, you know, very strongly, I think uh, MPO members are in support of um, making sure bus priority is a major, is an important part of that project. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Jay Monty. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and sorry, I'm gonna repeat myself a little bit here. Um, you know, I've, I've obviously been engaged with our, our partner communities in Boston and Starville, and, and I, I, to me, it's been loud and clear that bus priority on Mystic Ave is something that they've, um, you know, listed as a priority for, for them, but also for, I think, the region. Um, and certainly as communities um, who have been putting in a lot of effort to putting transit priority on our own streets, um, and that has been a political lift for all of us. Um, we're being asked by the T now to um, get out in front of bus network redesign and, and stand with the T to make sure that um, these improvements can be made, that these that our cities and towns will also make the improvements to our roadways to um, allow for um, the, the improved transit service. Um, so I just I just hope that MassDOT and that we will we'll kind of sing the same tune with this bridge because um, all of us are certainly going out on a limb to make sure that um, transit is a priority with new projects. And so I appreciate that, you know, there is a public process and that there is, um, you know, a lot of different views on this, um, but from what I'm hearing and from the actions of all of us um, in, in our various communities, uh, there really shouldn't be a question about it with this facility. And uh, I just hope Mass will take that in consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. John Bouchard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, the only item I wanted to, to bring up on the uh, on the amendment, and I defer to Matt uh, Genova, is that um, and the you know my colleagues at the T is that this was fiscal twenty two money that was um, that was being used. I'm not sure the T is is in a position to initiate and extend uh, further environmental process in with fiscal twenty two funds. And um, I mean, that was one of the reasons that uh, there was discussion because the T clearly had other, some other priorities that were presented on the 31st uh, for the use of the fiscal 22, 23, 24 money. And um, I mean, to honor commitments that's beyond MassDOT Highway, it's not something that I'm directly involved in, but um, I just wanted to uh, make a point of, uh, uh, to note that it was the fiscal 22 money and I'm not sure that that money is ready to be committed and um, used by the MBTA on, you know, extending the environmental process for uh, uh, for GLX phase two. So, thank you. Tom Bitt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not sure when I should uh, uh, ask this question of you uh, because it seems like both uh, both items, the motion and the uh, uh, the Maffa Way piece are kind of um, mixed right now. On, um, but first of all, I, uh, I support you know, obviously the, uh, the issues that Brad brought up and the uh, uh, Jay and other people about the, uh, you know, adding the bus, uh, the bus piece to uh, that project. But I also wanted to ask uh, David, um, when we talked about uh, GLX2 a while back, um, I thought you were going to look into whether MPO TIP funds could be used for environmental permitting. Does that uh, ring a bell to you? Uh, so, I so I, I don't I don't recall that, but we can have that discussion. So clearly, environmental permitting is project development, and I believe the project development is eligible for capital expenditure. There's a question as to whether you can use highway money for environmental permitting of MBTA projects or not. That would have to be asked of our federal partners. But but I, I believe clearly you can use capital money for capital projects and that includes permitting through design. That's what I believe is true. Okay. All right, and, and again, we're just reminding everyone that this was a commitment a while back. So, you know, uh, trying to get more, uh, more information uh, now on you know what that cost would be, so we could uh, plan accordingly for that. Um, and right now, we wouldn't be able to support Steve's uh, motion. Ken Miller, uh, 
thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, uh, a comment on uh, John Bouchard's comment about uh, the funding. Uh, uh, it would be possible, and I'm not, I'm not taking a position on this one way or the other. It's not my place. But just in terms of the mechanics, if, if, if uh, this NPO decided to uh, allocate some funding to uh, you know, uh, environmental process, uh, the money could be transferred to FTA for the T's use, and then it would, um, FTA has different rules in terms of obligation authority in, in uh, federal highway funds. They have to be used, uh, obligated and used uh, uh, this uh, during this fiscal year, but once uh, FTA is different, uh, their obligation authority can be carried over from year to year. So if the funds were transferred to FTA, they, they would be available when the T, uh, when and if the T <laughs> uh, wanted to move forward uh, with the risk that they may not at some point, who knows? Uh, the other thing is that there may be a timing issue. I know, uh, David, you know this very well, uh, to transfer funds uh, during a fiscal year, it has to be done at a certain time of the year. Uh, and that time is uh, like now. <laughs> uh, so just, uh, just, just, uh, just, uh, uh, just a little bit about the mechanics of, of possible. And I think to your point, Mr. Chair, I think this uh, most likely would be eligible. I, I'm not gonna guarantee that this would be eligible, but I would imagine CMAC funding, if you could show that the green line was eligible for CMAC funding, uh, which I think this MPO is already devoted to phase one, if you could show that phase two, it was, uh, was CMAC eligible, I would imagine that the project development costs would be eligible for uh, federal highway funds to, and then could be transferred to the T, to FTA. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Steve Olinoff. So uh, the, the purpose of my bringing, uh, making this motion was to first respond to the, the public comments that were made and to get a discussion going on, on this topic. Uh, so assuming that the uh, mass dot uh, will take appropriate action on this and that uh, someone at the proper time will have a, a appropriate motion to uh, fund the phase, the environmental review of phase two. So therefore I'm in, uh, withdrawing my motion. Okay, Brad Rawson. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to board members and advocates for a thoughtful debate and discussion. I do want to call the board and staff and agency attention to part of the public comment that was submitted on Green Line to Route 16. Um, one of the public commenters attached a letter that was filed uh, May 4th, 2016 by Secretary Pollack to um, uh, then current Mayor Stephanie Mussini-Burke in the city of Medford, and it does explicitly commit Mass DOT to seeking and supplying planning and environmental review funds for Green Line extension to Route 16. So I think that got lost in our debate the last 10 minutes or so, Chair. I just wanted to make sure, you know, consistent with what Steve Olinoff just described and what we've heard from board members, that I think the intent was to unlock this process, which this MPO and the host cities uh, were, you know, received formal commitments from MassDOT in 2016 as part of the emergency rescoping and life-saving effort of Green Line 1. Um, so I just wanted to make that clarification. Thank you so much. Yep. Any other comments or questions on this amendment? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to approve this amendment as presented today? Oh, wait, Brian Kane has his hand up. I can see it, even though his, his raise head function's not working. Brian, go ahead before anybody else. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. We, You're welcome. We, we need to move to a webinar format instead of a... Anyway, um, I guess I would like to just follow up on what Ken Miller said and see if there was a way to fund this at perhaps a lower level for the project from MPO funds uh, while adding in bus priority and also then perhaps seeing if the state could pick up some more or the T could pick up some more uh, if the T is willing to do that because it sounds like we can flex FTA money across multiple fiscal years. So I guess, my technical question, David, uh, to whomever you think is best to answer it is, could we do this? Could we move it for 44 million instead of, or 46 million instead of 47 million? Uh, 
with another million for bus treatments. So I, I, no, I, I am confused. I'm confused. <laughs> you, you have totally confused me. So, I, so, so I guess I want to move it for 47 in total, but yeah. 46 for the project itself and an extra one for bus treatments. But, but the bus treatments are part of the pro would, would ultimately, everybody wants them to be part of the project, right? I, 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 I don't, I don't know how that. to accomplish what you're trying to do, I don't think. I think what you're trying to do is, is say, MassDOT can have 46 million, look, I'm not sure what, if MassDOT ultimately does not come to the table with bus treatments, MassDOT would still be able to spend the $46 million and all you've done is put a million dollars aside for something that's not going to happen, I think. Like, I, I, understand, I think I understand what you're trying to do, but I don't know that, that, that what, you're, what you're proposing gets to where you want to go. And I don't, I don't want to mislead anybody by taking a vote and thinking they somehow we've protected or insured bus lanes and then come to find out we didn't really. Yeah, right. I, I don't think what you're what you're proposing does what you want to do. Okay. Well, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, I'm not. So that's what I, I, I think. I'm not sure. Jay? I think I'm trying to get at the same thing Brian's trying to get at, which is, um, you know, we want to fund this. We want to make sure that uh, the city's concerns regarding transit priority are addressed. Um, I'm not quite sure how to do that. <laughs> Brian, so, um, you know, I, I don't know, there's something about, you know, we were, you know, is there a commitment that can be made to, for MassDOT to take another look at this to, to reopen the public process or, or, or something, uh, you know, it seems like there's a consensus among the communities here to see something addressed. And I right. Right. right, so, so yes, I, I, we can certainly make a commitment to continue dialogue. That does not necessarily, again, I don't want to mislead anybody. The, the, what the NPO can do is decide not to fund this project if it doesn't have the bus lane, yet, right? The NPO can just say no. That will not necessarily mean the bus lane will get done. It will just mean the NPO is not funding funding the project because it doesn't have a bus lane. Right. Right. The and I I'm happy to commit to continuing a dialogue, but at some point, MassDOT is going to make a final decision, and if that final decision does not include the bus lane and this amendment has passed, we will use this money for that project without the bus. I just want to make sure everybody understands because I don't, I don't want to mislead anybody. Conversely, if the NPO decides not to program this money for the bus lane, we got to figure out how to spend this money and do it fairly quickly because to Ken's point, if you're looking for a transit project, we're almost out of time to actually flex this money to transit. Secondly, masked up, it may not, you know, the, the decision not to fund it, is a decision about NPO priorities, not about whether MassDOT will proceed with a project that does not have a bus lane. If indeed MassDOT decides that's the project we want to build. So, so I, I just, I don't understand. I, 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 I mean, the NPO obviously do whatever the NPO wants to do, it's your money. I just don't want to mislead anybody about what the impact of whatever we do is. Well, I understand. That's why I'm not suggesting we defund the project. I, I completely understand that. I just want to make sure our, our community partners are, are heard and, and their concerns are met. Yeah, I can, I can certainly, with John Bichard's concurrence, commit to a continued dialogue and, and process. But at some point, the decision will be made. And I can't, I don't want anybody to think that continuing a process guarantees an outcome, right? You know, I, I will keep to myself what I would hope the outcome would be. That's, that's my own personal opinion. But, but you know, I, I, can, I can commit to a process. I can't commit to an outcome today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Brett? Thank you, Chair. You're welcome. I just want to reiterate comments that the city of Somerville provided two weeks ago, that the city of Somerville is in full support of this bridge reconstruction on the condition that the design of that bridge, those bridges, is consistent with adopted policy embedded in the long range transportation plan, past and current tips, which calls for safe streets, which calls for bus priority, which calls for environmental justice and congestion relief. A couple of quick clarifications, Chair. A design public hearing that Mass DOT Major Projects Division hosted on March 2nd, 2022, showed unanimous support from Somerville, Boston, and other regional stakeholders, from elected officials and state delegation for exactly the types of bus treatments that are being discussed by this board right now. 
Um, and I think it's just really important to, to note for board members something that we said two weeks ago, MassDOT has proposed to use a design build methodology to deliver this bridge project. And the city of Somerville is supportive of that because it helps you advance this crucial state of good repair work quickly and it helps the MPO solve a cash flow problem. That said, this is this board and these communities and this region's last opportunity because once those design build procurement documents are issued at 25% design, design build entities will have no contractual mechanism to follow up on the dialogue that is being discussed today. We've experienced this with the Green Line extension in Somerville. The horse is leaving the barn. The stakeholders who are interested in bus priority on this project or similar ones um, need to recognize the closing window of opportunity. Thank you, Chair. Brian King. You having fun yet, David? Um, I, I love public process, Brian. Yeah. Don't we all? Um, I just want to really echo what, what you know, uh, Somerville and Everett are clearly stating um, that, you know, we want to move this forward in such a way. So I guess as a way to propose a path forward, I wonder if you would entertain something along the lines of a, a resolution from the MPO um, going on the record stating that it wants bus treatments uh, safe in the knowledge that we cannot bind the Department of Transportation, but we just want to go on the record stating that that's our intent. That is certainly appropriate if the MPO would like to take that motion. And you can make the motion and we can see if there's a second and discuss it in vote on Okay, well, uh, Daniel just raised his hand, so maybe we should keep talking. But. Well, Daniel might have to raise his hand to second your motion. I'm not sure. Let, Daniel, why do you have your hand up? Uh, thank you. Yes, I, I just wanted to, um, I, I agree with that, or I agree with what Brian is, is uh, if that's sort of our best way of expressing the comments and the feelings of the MPO board here, then I agree with that, but I would, I would like to add on to that a piece about the green line extension to you know phase two to say that we would also like to get clear um you know understanding of next steps on the environmental review for that and and ideally by you know there is a a request for a scope so, you know understanding that project um by september 1st of this year um that's i if possible, would like to add on to that as a part of that sort of resolution, while also you know supporting the amendment itself to have the money put onto Mafaway as been discussed. So I, I have a question. So as to not muddle these two issues together, can we do two resolutions? I'm, and, and, and frankly, if everybody wants to do one resolution, I'm, I'm not going to waste a lot of time discussing it. But but it would seem to me that it would be it would be clearer and writing motions on the fly is a little hard anyway. So actually, I don't, I don't see clear, Brian, you can make one, one resolution motion or two. It's up to you. Um, I so guess I would, forward. I'll defer to Daniel. If you want to uh, make both of them go, go have a shot, buddy. <laughs> go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so I think, okay. So, putting these as one resolution. Well, okay, is this, this, these resolutions are sort of separate from the, the amend, like approving the amendment itself or are they- Yeah, we, we still don't, yes, we still don't have a motion on the amendment at all, okay? okay. We, haven't even, we haven't even moved to approve it yet. So I think this is a motion, we're gonna do the resolutions first and then take a motion on the amendment, I guess. All right, Daniel, I'll, I'll try it. I'm, I'm just, okay, I, thanks. I didn't want to, that, that was mean of me to kick it to you like that. I guess uh, I would make a motion that it is the sense of the MPO uh, that any project on, that this project on Mafa Way uh, include uh, bus priority treatments uh, in its um, implementation. Uh, and it is furthermore the sense of the MPO uh, that uh, GLX phase two uh, needs to advance quickly. Um, and um, what did you say, Daniel, by September 1st, there has to be something done? Well, the, the request from the um, state delegation is to have a, a scope finalized and a consultant work authorized by September 1st. 
Okay. Or that that would be, I guess, try to putting a date on it. Okay. And yeah, so what, what Daniel just said in that uh, there be a scope completed um, um, for implementation or advancement by September 1st. Yes. <sighs> And Daniel, you're seconding that motion. <laughs> I, I will second. Thank you. Yeah, I will second. Uh, Tom Ben. I uh, no, uh, I I'm in full support of that. I was going to second it, uh, but uh, yep, it's fine with me. Right. Any other comments, questions, debate? David Cozes. All right. I mean, a resolution to prioritize bike, you know, the bus lanes <clears throat> in the design process seems okay if people prefer that. I just never really remember <clears throat> doing anything like this before in these years, just at the very moment that we're about to vote on a project. And I'm not really sure what if it like what weight does it carry? Does it isn't it already mass dot policy and isn't this already sort of what happens through the regular design, you know, the regular process? Is this like why are why is this different in some way? John Bichard, can you answer that question? Not the question about what weight the resolution has, but why isn't the bus lane included in this project already? Um, my team, you know, we've we've proposed bus lanes on Marfa Way, and to my knowledge, on a the portion of Mystic that's in Sullivan Square area, and I, I, I would have to defer to my team, which I don't have all the answers for. As we said, we have to adjust on the fly. Uh, I don't have all the answers from my team. Uh, why we, that hasn't been extended? Does is it doesn't meet not meet warrants or uh, there, there's a you know a structural issue that we can't accommodate that? So I, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I, I don't have a great yeah. answer to it. All right, and then David, as to the import of the resolution, you know, it, it, it is a statement of priority for the MPO and, and, and it has a certain weight therefore, but no, it, it does not force anyone to do anything. But it does put the MPO on record about this project and, and the use of their funds. All right, I mean, so that, you know, it, it seems fine to me. It just, I just never remembered this kind of resolution before. So maybe it's a one one time thing. Thank you, David. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none. Jonathan, please call the roll. David Moeller. I'm going to abstain. John Bouchard. Abstain. John Romano. Abstain. Jillian Linnell. Abstain. Sarah Lee. Abstain. Allison Felix. Abstain. Brian Kane. Wholeheartedly yes. Leonard Diggins. Yes. Bill Conroy. Upstate. Uh, my understanding is Joe Blankenship has taken over for Jim Fitzgerald. Uh, so Joe Blankenship. That's right. Uh, Upstate. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Cozes. David Cozes, yes. Daniel Amstutz. In the lamp, so it's yes. Todd Corain. Todd Corain, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Dennis G. and Betty. Dennis G. and Betty abstains. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Melissa Tentacolis. Melissa, yes. Jennifer Constable. Jennifer Constable, yes. Peter Pelletier. It looks like Peter Pelletier has dropped off the meeting. Okay, uh, Steve Olinoff. 
Steve on off, yes. Okay, I'm gonna have to count this. Uh, We have a uh, motion fails, 10 yeses, nine abstains. Why, why isn't that a pass? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the two thirds uh, present and voting yes, but that's for certification documents and amendments. So I guess it does pass. Right, it passes, right? This is a resolution, not a. This is a resolution. So yes, it does pass. My apologies. <laughs> okay, no worries. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. That motion passes. So staff needs to, to write up that resolution and and somehow officially transmit it to MassDOT. I mean, we we know it, we were all here. But but let's do something in official for for the record to get it in front of us. We'll Brian King, I'd like to move approval of the amendment as presented by Machinova seventeen hours ago. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Tom Ben, I'll second that. Thank you. Motion having been made and seconded. Please call the roll, gentlemen. David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Jillian Linnell. Jillian Linnell, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Allison Felix. Allison Felix, yes. Brian Kane. Brian Kane, yes. Leonard Diggins. Uh, Bill Conroy. Bill Conroy, yes. Uh, Joe Blankenship. Joe Blankenship, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz, yes. Todd Corain. Todd Corain, yes. Tom Bent. Uh, Tom Bent, yes. Dennis Jean Betty. Dennis Jean Betty, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Melissa Tintakalis. Melissa Tintakalis, yes. Jennifer Constable. Jennifer Constable, yes. And Steve Olenoff. Steve all off, yes. Motion carries unanimous, Mr. Chair. Thank you, John. Next item on the agenda is an action item on the FFY 22-26 TIP adjustment number two, matching over. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you all for the robust discussion on that last one. And uh, from the staff perspective, we will work on that resolution and, and get you all something in writing in the coming days. Um, for Second of four presentations on my part today will hope to make this one a little bit faster. Um, I have amendment or adjustment to to the federal fiscal years 2022 through 26 TIF. So this is the second adjustment proposed to the current TIP. Adjustment two proposes funding source adjustments for three Metro West RTA projects. These changes include carrying forward FTA 5307 funding from federal fiscal year 2021 to federal fiscal year 2022 for three projects. In addition, one of these projects is also proposed to see an increase in state RTA capital assistance program funds to increase the state match to an ex a project funded with uh, existing 5307 funds. So I'll be a little bit more specific here. Uh, you can see that the amendment proposes a total increase of approximately $200,000 in MWRTA's 2022 TIP this increase includes both the carry forward funds from fiscal 2021 and the increase in matching funds mentioned earlier. Again, these changes are in support of three different MWRTA projects, including improvements at the Blandon Intermodal Terminal, technology support, and improvements at the Framingham Commuter Rail Station. 
Uh, so today's staff's request is that this board vote to endorse adjustment two. And before we do that, uh, I want to echo some of Tegan's comments earlier in her executive director's report, where she sort of reminded the board of the difference between an amendment and adjustment, just because we have a lot, we have both on the agenda for today, and I want to be clear sort of why things are falling into different buckets. And that's really because certain types of project changes, such as funding source changes and minor changes to project scope, don't need to go through the full TIP amendment process. As you know, the amendment process is really geared towards those larger changes, um, things like uh, significant cost changes or the additional removal of projects from the TIP. And amendments require that 21 day public comment period while adjustments do not require a comment period. Uh, so in this case, pursuing an adjustment for these Metro West RTA projects allows them to move forward sooner, which is really critical for um, Metro West RTA to move forward with procurement and other deadlines in the coming months. That's all I have on amendment two, uh, or sorry, adjustment two. <laughs> and so with that, I'll turn it back over to the chair for questions and a vote. Thank you. Yeah, Matt, yeah, Matt I actually have a question just because of what you just said. Are, aren't we adding projects to the tip that aren't in, that aren't in the tip? Uh, so these projects are, already funded in 20 so they were in the 21 tip so they're already funded in the 2022 tip and then this uh, adjustment just pulls forward some additional unused 2021 funds into those 2020 existing Got it. we're just adding projects. money to projects that already that already exist yes All right, cool thanks dennis i'll make that motion to approve the adjustment too is there a second Brian. I have an incredibly complex, no, yes, I, I second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, please call the roll, Jonathan. David Muller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Jillian Linnell. Jillian Linnell, yes. Ms. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Allison Felix. Allison Felix, yes. Brian, uh, yes, Brian Kane. Brian Kane, yes. Leonard Diggins. Leonard Diggins, yes. Bill Conroy. Bill Conroy, yes. Joe Blankenship. Joe Blankenship, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. Uh, David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz, yes. Todd Corain. Todd Corain, yes. Tom Ben. Tom Ben, yes. Dennis Jean Betty. Dennis Jean Betty, yes. Darlene Nguyen. Darlene Wynn, yes. Melissa Tentaculous. Melissa Tentaculous, yes. Jennifer Constable. Jennifer Constable, yes. And Steve Olinoff. Steve Olinoff, yes. Motion carries unanimous, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jonathan. Next item on the agenda is action item on still on the 22 to 26 tip, and this one is a minute side. Matt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is the final 22 to 26 uh, change for today. And this is amendment five to the fiscal 22 through 26 tip. So amendment five impacts the transit programs for both the MBTA and CADA. Amendment five's primary focus is the alignment of the MBTA's federal fiscal years 2022 through 26 tip with their proposed fiscal years 2023 through 27 tip. To that end, Amendment 5 proposes the addition of a handful of new project-specific line items. Uh, those include the Lynn and Forest Hills, Hills Station Improvement Projects that are funded by the MPO, uh, which are also included in the draft 23 through 27 tip, uh, as well as the awarding of two recent FTA grants to the MBTA, including a passenger ferry grant and a grant in support of the Quincy Bus Facility Project. Amendment 5 also proposes a number of other adjustments to projects and programs throughout the MBTA's TIP in order to include new funding available through the bipartisan infrastructure law and to account for current project readiness. In addition to those MBTA-related changes, 
Amendment 5 also proposes the addition of one project to the Cape and Transportation Authority's 2023 program. Uh, for a few more specifics, I did want to emphasize that Amendment 5 uh, does include both of those MBTA station improvement projects that were selected for funding by the MPO back on March 31st. In Amendment 5, you'll see the $48.1 million in federal and state matching funds for the Lynn Commuter Rail Station project, and another $6.4 million in federal and state matching funds for the Forest Hills project. Uh, and the new proposed uh, project proposed for addition to CADA's 2023 program uh, through Amendment 5 is the replacement of a 35-foot bus for approximately $1.4 million. So today, staff's request is that this board vote to release Amendment 5 for a 21-day public comment period. If approved, that comment period would begin in the coming days, putting the amendment on track to be endorsed by this board on May 26th. That's all I have, so I'll turn it back over to the chair for questions and a vote. Questions for Matt? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to release this for a 21 day public comment period? Brian Kane. Move approval, Mr. Chair. Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz seconds the motion. Thank you. Motion have been made and seconded. Please call the roll, John. David Muller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Jillian Linnell. Jillian Linnell, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Allison Felix. Allison Felix, yes. Leonard Diggins. I'm sorry, uh, Brian Kane. Uh, Brian Kane, yes. Leonard Diggins. What did they say about age report beauty? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, Bill Conroy. Bill Conroy, yes. Uh, Joe Blankenship. Joe Blankenship, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz, yes. Todd Karain. Todd Karain, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Dennis Jean Betty. Dennis Jean Betty, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Melissa Tentacolis. Melissa, yes. Um, you broke up a bit there. Could you repeat that, please? She said yes. I heard her. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer yeah, Constable? It was stretched out over. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Jennifer Constable, yes. And Steve Olinoff. Steve Olinoff, yes. Motion carries unanimous, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Next item is still Matt Genova. <laughs> Vote to release the 2023-2027 TIP, Matt Genova. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I promise this is it for me, so you guys don't have to hear too much more from me today. Um, last but certainly not least is a presentation of the draft Federal Fiscal Years 2023 through 27 Transportation Improvement Program. In this presentation, I'll recap at a high level some of the key takeaways from this year's draft TIP before asking this board to take a vote to release it for a 21-day public review period. As always, there are a couple of resources that are posted to the MPO meeting calendar under today's date for your review. First, there's a packet of written public comments that have been submitted to MPO staff since March 31st. These comments are in addition to the ones that we discussed earlier on, on Amendment 3 and are strictly those that concern the development of the new 2023 through 27 tip. Uh, so just those two items are posted separately in the meeting calendar if you're, if you're looking for those there. And most importantly, uh, the postings for today also include the draft tip itself, um, which is available for your enjoyment. So as we get going today, I'll take a second to provide a sense for how far we've come and where we still have left to go in the coming weeks. We are very much in the home stretch of developing this year's tip. 
As I said at the outset of this presentation, the goal for today is really for this board to vote to release the draft tip for public review. This is the last major action that this board needs to take before considering the draft 23 through 27 tip for final endorsement in late May. Before we get into the specifics of the draft tip, uh, I do wanna take a minute to review the written public comments that have been submitted to MPO staff over the last four weeks. So since the March 31st MPO meeting, staff have received six written comments on three different perspective tip projects. All three of these projects were scored for funding by the MPO this year and have been selected for funding in the draft tip. First, uh, one common letter was submitted on the Belmont community path. This letter is from Francis Napoli, a resident of Belmont. This letter expresses concern about investing more than $20 million in phase one of this project, while there is still uncertainty about phase two of the project, uh, which will extend the proposed path further west to connect with other portions of the Mass Central Rail Trail. The letter highlights the importance of the tunnel portion of the phase one project, which is included uh, in the scope that the MPO has proposed for funding in the draft tip, uh, and that would create a safe connection between the town's new high school and Belmont Center. And the letter suggests that this tunnel should be the main priority over the larger path project, which again still has some uncertainty around phase two. Uh, second here, two comment letters were submitted on the rehabilitation of Washington Street in Brookline. Those letters are from Shanali Gaudino and Jeff Walker, both residents of Brookline. Collectively, these letters support the MPO's decision to include funding for this project in the draft 2023 through 27 tip. The letters note the significant support for the project locally, and highlight the importance of Washington Street as a key commercial and residential corridor and critical connection between neighborhoods in Brookline and beyond. And then finally, three letters were submitted on the Swampskip Rail Trail by local residents, uh, including two by Merrill Rose and one by Tom Pilaria. One of the letters from Ms. Rose was actually written last year in uh, last March of 2021 and was shared with the MPO at that time, but it's been reshared in today's materials at the request of the commenter. Uh, together, these letters request that the MPO ref refrain from allocating funding to the Swampskit Rail Trail in the draft tip. The commenters contend that there are a number of issues with the proposed project, including legal questions around land ownership and potential takings, and erosion issues with the existing sections of the path today. The commenters argue that the town has not engaged in a meaningful dialogue with the butters to address their concerns about the project, uh, and that the project's benefits are being oversold while the drawbacks of the project, including the removal of trees and complications around easement negotiations with National Grid are being understated. The commenters request that the MPO not fund the project until these issues are resolved. Uh, I do wanna note that two other comment letters were submitted on the Swampscott Rail Trail after comments were already compiled for this week's MPO meeting. Uh, these letters are also in opposition to the project and will be shared with, along with the public comments on the draft tip next month. Uh, and again, during the public comment period uh, earlier today, during the um, outset of the meeting, you heard um, from one of those commenters. Uh, and so those letters, in addition to any others we receive, uh, will certainly be shared with the board in the coming weeks. Uh, so I'd like to start my summary of this year's draft tip with some notes on the document itself. And before I do that, uh, as I like to do at this time of year, I really wanna take a minute to say thank you to a number of my colleagues on MPO staff who helped make this report a reality. First, I'd like to thank my teammates on the certification activities team for their help writing several sections of the tip, including Michelle Scott, Betsy Harvey, Ann McCann, and Matt Archer. Uh, thank you as well to Jonathan Church and Annette Demcher, both of whom provided timely guidance on the material throughout the report. And thank you to Maureen Kelly, our managing editor, who has worked hard to review the whole report and make sure things are clean and flowing well. And last but not least, I do want to give a huge shout out to our graphics team, including Kate Parker O'Toole, Ken Dumas, and Kim Delory, all of whom work together to finalize the report's layout, maps, and graphics. Uh, I always try to emphasize this as much as I can in the TIP process, um, but it really does take a village to make the TIP happen. And this year's uh, draft TIP is certainly no exception. So thank you for humoring me and let me take the time to, to recognize everyone involved. The report itself follows the same basic content as in recent years. Uh, the report leads off with an executive summary offering an overview of the key takeaways from the full document. Chapters one and two cover background information on the MPO's 3C planning process and the TIP process specifically. 
Chapter three provides an overview of every project and program funded in this year's TIP, including those funded by the MPO, MassDOT, MBTA, CADA, and MWRTA. Chapters four through six provide analyses of the projects outlined in chapter three. Uh, chapter four is an overall analysis of how the projects funded this year support, pro uh, support progress on the region's performance measures. Chapter five certifies that the projects and programs in the TIP are in alignment with the air quality requirements of the TIP process. And chapter six provides an analysis of how the projects funded by the MPO advance this body's equity goals. So while the document that you see posted on the MPO's meeting calendar today is substantially complete, MPO staff do plan on making a handful of updates to the report before releasing it for public comment. Uh, so given all the new funding on the table this year, which is certainly a very exciting problem to have, um, there were a significant, significant number of new projects to add to chapter three. Uh, and so you'll notice here that some of the project pages have placeholder text where project locus map should be. Staff plan to replace this placeholder text with new maps in advance of starting the public comment period. And as Tegan noted in her executive director's report earlier this morning, uh, CTPS has experienced a network issue in recent weeks uh, that limited access to our files and servers. And that has unfortunately delayed the timeline on some of the equity analyses for chapter six. Staff are working through those issues now and plan to have a complete version of chapter six available um, alongside the draft tip when it's released in the coming days. So in addition to these areas, staff are also reviewing the report cover to cover to make any other minor edits and corrections to ensure that the version of the draft tip that's released for public comment is as clean and complete as possible. So with that, I'll dive into a recap of what's included in this year's draft tip. I'll start with a focus on the MPO's regional target funds, and then we'll also touch on those projects and programs funded by our partners here in the region. So there are really two major factors that, defi that define the decision-making landscape for this year's tip process. The first is that the MPO had significant new funding available for allocation this year as a result of the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law back in November. The MPO's regional target program saw an increase of just shy of 20% annually, or roughly $20 million in each federal fiscal year. That brings the MPO's total five-year program from roughly $540 million in the current 2022 through 26 tip to $645 million in the forthcoming 2023 through 27 tip. Important to highlight here is that this tip cycle also saw significantly fewer project cost and readiness issues than in recent years. Just three projects exceeded the MPO's 25% cost change threshold this year, and only two projects were recommended for a delay due to readiness concerns. And so these two factors combined, um, the new funding plus the lack of um, cost increases and schedule issues, um, to give this board some pretty broad flexibility in the allocation of funding to new projects in this tip cycle. So MPO staff scored 25 projects for funding through the regional target program. 11 community connections projects applied for funding this year, as did eight complete streets projects. Two projects apiece were considered within the MPO's intersection improvements, major infrastructure, and bicycle and pedestrian investment programs. In total, 20 of these 25 projects were selected for funding by the MPO, with two others selected for funding by MassDOT. The MPO also selected three projects for funding that were not scored this year, including one complete streets project and two transit modernization projects. In total, the MPO allocated roughly $236 million in funding to new projects and programs in the 2023 through 27 TIP. This is on top of funding allocated to existing projects and programs through the 22 to 26 tip. Included in that total are 23 new MPO funded projects across all six of the MPO's investment programs. Also included in that total are increases in the annual funding allocation to the MPO's community connections and transit modernization programs by half a million dollars and $1 million respectively. These funding levels were adjusted to, uh, higher to reflect the MPO's new higher annual funding through the bipartisan infrastructure law. And the MPO has set a goal of spending 2% of its funding on community connections and 5% on transit modernization projects. And so with those percentages and the higher funding totals, that's where you get the, the slightly higher annual funding allocation. Um, one other thing I wanted to flag here um, is that while it's not formally included in the 23 through 27 tip, I did want to highlight 
probably doesn't need to be <laughs> highlighted at this point, but um, BMPO did uh, allocate roughly $47 million in 2022 funds to the bridge replacement project that we've already discussed at length today at Moffa Way and Mystic Avenue in Boston. Um, so that project was added in here as a part of broader discussions and obviously just endorsed by this board earlier in today's dialogue. Uh, and then actually last thing on here, but I did just want to emphasize there again that there were uh, fewer cost and readiness issues for currently programmed projects this year and just two projects were delayed into later fiscal years. So here's an overall snapshot of the MPO's funding across each fiscal year of the new TIP. This board made the decision to retain some funding in each fiscal year to allow for flexibility in future TIP cycles. To that end, between $2 million and $4 million in, is unprogrammed annually uh, in fiscal years 2023, 25, 26, and 27. This board also elected to leave a larger amount of funding unprogrammed in fiscal 2024, retaining more than $16 million in this fiscal year for future use. That leaves this board with a total of more than $29 million in unallocated funding over five years, and that funding can be considered for future uses by this board. So it's always useful to check in to see how the proposed TIP aligns with the MPO's funding goals for each investment program. These funding goals are set through the MPO's long-range transportation plan, Destination 2040, which was endorsed by this board back in August of 2019. As you can see, this year's TIP is slightly ahead of both the MPO's 45% funding goal for complete streets projects and the MPO's 5% funding goal for bicycle and pedestrian projects. In contrast, the MPO is well under its allocation targets for both the major infrastructure and intersection improvement programs. Uh, for the major infrastructure program, this is largely due uh, to the delay of the reconstruction of Rutherford Avenue from 2023 to 2025. And for the intersection improvements program, this is due to the lack of available projects for consideration for funding through that program in this TIP cycle. You'll also notice here that the MPO has exceeded its 5% funding goal for the transit modernization program. This is due to the programming of more than $50 million um, in fiscal 2023 and 2024 to two MBTA station improvement projects. And again, those are in Lynn and Forest Hills. As a reminder, these projects were selected for funding in an, uh, by the MPO in an effort to utilize a significant funding surplus in 2023 and 24. Um, again, the funding surplus resulted from a combination of new bipartisan infrastructure law funds and the delay of the Rutherford Avenue project to a later fiscal year. Um, other things to note on the slide is that the MPO remains on target with its 2% funding goal for community connections projects and just shy of 5% of overall funding remains unallocated. In past years, this board has also requested an, an analysis of how the MPO's funds are distributed across each of the, each of the eight subregions that make up the larger Boston region. Depicted in yellow is the percent of the MPO's funding allocate, allocated to each subregion, while the other three bars in each cluster represent the percent of the region's population, employment, and federal aid roadway miles in each subregion. This dis distribution of funding tends to be uh, somewhat spiky year to year, depending on the addition or subtraction of individual projects from the TIP. And so, for instance, uh, the Magic subregion has three significant projects programmed in the current fiscal year, 2022, uh, including Kelly's Corner in Acton, the Miniman Bikeway in Bedford, and the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail in Sudbury and Concord. And so, because these three larger projects are no longer in this distribution because they're in fiscal 2022, um, that makes Magic's allocation in this TIP look low, um, but really there's a lot of ongoing investment from the MPO in the Magic subregion. It's just not reflected in this five-year snapshot. Uh, and sort of a similar dynamic, but in the opposite direction, you can see that the amount of funding allocated to the North Shore Task Force subregion looks high, uh, but that's largely because new funding was allocated this TIP cycle to projects in Salem, Swampscott, Rockport, and Gloucester. The key takeaway here is that the distribution of funding across the region is largely dependent on which projects are available for consideration in a given fiscal year. Uh, but it's always useful to sort of step back and check on this metric to make sure that the board is adequately meeting the transportation needs across the whole region in an ongoing way. Uh, so there are really several other ways to think about the MTO's regional target program. Uh, the information on this slide and the next two are pulled from chapter four of the draft tip which includes an infographic um, that's sort of broken out on the slide here um, that is really provides a snapshot of the MPO's impact in the region. 
As you can see here, there are 51 total projects funded by the MPO in the 23 through 27 TIP, with a significant focus on complete streets projects. This is in line with the MPO's goals of promoting a multimodal transportation system across the region. And these projects are funded in 44 cities and towns throughout the region, meaning, meaning that nearly half of the region's communities will see some level of investment through the MPO funds in the next five years. These projects will make a significant impact on the region's transportation system, rehabilitating nine bridges, 35 miles of substandard sidewalk, and 73 lane miles of substandard pavement. These projects will improve safety at 25 crash clusters throughout the region, while enhancing resiliency at 28 locations. Projects funded by the MPO in the 23 through 27 TIP will support eight new and existing transit services, create nine new bike share stations while rehabilitating five others, add 11 miles to the regional sidewalk network, and 52 lane miles to the region's bike and shared use path networks. These projects are anticipated to reduce greenhouse gas emissions across the region while improving access to 33 targeted economic development areas. So I know I focused a lot up to this point on the MPO's regional target program, uh, but I did want to take a minute towards the end of my presentation here to highlight the investments from MassDOT, the MBTA, and the RTAs in the draft tip. So starting with MassDOT, the 23 through 27 tip represents a significant expansion of MassDOT's federal program. There are a combination of factors at play here. Uh, first, the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law has supported an increase in many of MassDOT's core programs, including bicycle and pedestrian projects, roadway reconstruction, safety improvements, and pavement preservation projects. The bill also created a new bridge formula program, which has allowed MassDOT to more than triple the federal funding that's spent on bridge replacement and preservation efforts in the region. MassDOT's 23 through 27 TIP also includes a number of projects that are funded, funded through the state's new Next Generation Bridge Program, which leverages state transportation bond capacity alongside federal formula funding to accelerate improvements on many of the region's structurally deficient bridges. These two bridge programs together will allow for more than $1 billion in spending on critical infrastructure over the next five years, in addition to the roughly $750 million in other projects and programs in MassDOT's TIP. The MBTA's federal capital program is roughly $400 million larger in the 23 through 27 TIP than it was in the 22 through 26 TIP. And again, this is largely due to the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law. As we heard Julian Linnell discuss at the April 14th MPO meeting, and much like uh, MassDOT prioritizes in their TIP, the MBTA's tip is largely focused on investments in reliability and modernization. The MBTA prioritizes projects that keep the existing transit system in a state of good repair, including the purchase of new rolling stock, accessibility and resiliency improvements to stations, the rehabilitation of bridges and tunnels, and the replacement of tracks and signals to support system-wide reliability. The MBTA's federal program is the largest component of the Boston Region's TIP, representing nearly $4 billion of the roughly $6.5 billion in investment in the fiscal years 23 through 27 TIP. And we covered this in more detail back on March 31st, but CADA and MWRTA together have more than $55 million in investments in their transit systems in the 23 through 27 TIP. This represents an increase of roughly $3.2 million from the current 22 to 26 tip. This will sound familiar by now, uh, but CADA and MWRTA are similarly focused on using their federal funds to maintain and modernize their systems, including investments in stations, facilities, and vehicles to maintain a state of good repair. MWRTA's proposed tip also includes uh, funding to advance their work to electrify their paratransit vehicle fleet. So with all of that in mind, uh, where do we go from here? So as mentioned at the start of this presentation, staff's request today is to have this board vote to release the draft 23 through 27 tip for a 21 day public comment period. Staff anticipate that the public comment period will start in the coming days. And as soon as the comment period closes, staff will work to catalog and summarize all of the comments submitted on the draft. Those comments will then be shared with this board for review prior to a final vote being taken on endorsement. And assuming all goes according to plan, 
Uh, May 26th will be the target date for a final endorsement vote of the TIP by the MPO. That's all I have, so I'll turn it back over to the chair for discussion and a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Questions from the members? None, Matt, I have two. Somebody else does. My first question is, they're both on projects that are, are or are not included. I believe there was one community connections project that was rejected by the CMAC consultation committee. Is that project still in the draft? So that project is currently in the draft, um, of course. So the plan for that project is to continue to work with both the project proponent uh, and with the CMAC consultation committee to understand, um, to sort of take a second look at the analysis and understand the, the benefits of the project as it relates to air quality. Um, once we do sort of a second pass at that analysis, um, we will sort of touch base with, with the CMAC committee and understand if there's a, a path forward to vote to approve that project for CMAC funding before the draft tip is endorsed. If not, uh, if, if there's either not an air quality benefit shown or um, if the project um, is not endorsed by the, the CMAC committee, um, then that project would be removed from the final draft tip that would be presented to this board in late May. Okay. Um, just, just for the record, you should expect that we will, we will comment that, that it's time to remove the project. Uh, Thank you. Second one is Boston received a raise grant for $15 million. That's not yet programmed in this, in this tip, right? Um, so it is not, it is not, no. Okay. All right. Just at some point. Boston and the MBTA and, and MassDOT need to figure out the schedule and, and, and description of that project so we can go ahead and get it in the tip, preferably during this comment period, because um, I hate to have to do an amendment and wait to actually be able to access the money till next year. Anyway, thanks, Matt. Any other questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to approve the tip as release of the tip as presented today, Brian Kane. I move approval, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Don Ben. I'd like to uh, approve that motion. Thank you, motion have been, Thank you, motion have been made and seconded to release the draft 23 tip for a 21 day public comment period. Please call the roll, John. David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Jillian Linnell. Jillian Linnell, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Allison Felix. Allison Felix, yes. Brian Kane. Someone on mute, Brian Kane. I will come back. Leonard Diggins. Leonard Diggins, yes. Bill Conroy. Bill Conroy, yes. Uh, my understanding is Jim Fitzgerald is back. So Jim Fitzgerald. Yes, thank you. Jim Fitzgerald, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Kozas. David Kozas, yes. Uh, Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz, yes. Todd Corain. Todd Corain, yes. Tom Ben. Tom Ben, yes. Dennis G and Betty. It looks like Dennis has dropped from the meeting. Okay. Uh, Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Uh, Melissa Tentacolis. Melissa Tentacolis, yes. Jennifer Constable. Jennifer Constable, yes. Uh, Steve Olenoff. Steve Olenoff, yes. And I will go back to Brian Kane. Brian Kane, yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimous, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Brian. Uh, let's take a moment to, to discuss the remainder of the agenda with the MPO. 
So we still have three items to get to. You put the thank you. Um, we would like to try to get through items 12 and 13 if we can today, and we would move 14 to the next meeting. Um, but I need a sense of the MPO if, if, if we're ready to, to proceed or if you want to not proceed and figure out a way to schedule these for, I guess we would have to reschedule the meeting on the 5th. But we'd like to try to get through 13 and 14 if possible. Is that all right, Lynn? I very much support that, even though I do have something at 1230. I mean, I think it's important to get those studies going. So let's try to do so. All right. Daniel? Uh, yes, I'd agree with that. At, at least getting to number 13 so that that work scope can get moving. Okay. And Brian? Yeah. Can we, um, can we take them without uh, the presentations, assuming that everyone's read them or, or incredibly brief presentations and take the vote? Because I think a lot of us have 1230 hard stops. All right, so, so Tegan, do you want to get the, the vote on 13 done and then do the presentation, the two presentations at our next, you know, schedule them in a future meeting? Or do you want to try to shorten the present? I don't want to shorten the presentation on trip generation if, if you think it's really valuable and we should hear it. But I, I think we need to get the I don't, there may not be enough time for the full presentation and, and the vote on the work scope. Yeah, I think um, the, the work scope vote is useful and important to not to do now instead of waiting to the end of next month. So um, we could do that first. The key is that it does follow on the research that will be presented. Um, but I think if the board members feel comfortable voting on the next step before hearing the presentation, that is fine. I think it is difficult to ask to sort of shorten up presentation further on the fly and the presentation time should include Q&A. So, um, if the board wants us to reschedule it, we can, but we're happy to go through it today. All right. So, so given the, the hard stop that several people have at 1230, let's do the action item on the work scope and then we will adjourn and we will put, again, I'm assuming like Brian, that people have had time to read the, the presentation and so they can feel comfortable with the present, with that and the description of the action item voting today. And then we do, I do want to reschedule both of these presentations, however, because I think it's important that we hear Josh G's presentation on the work on, on trip generation rates, as well as obviously Juan's dinner presentation on the sub-regional priority roadways. So let's take up item number 13, please. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to quickly drop the presentation and then uh, reshare it on the appropriate slide, just because that will be faster than- Okay. Rolling through ben. everything. No, no problem. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we are on item 13, action item on the work scope for parking policy and trip generation study. Benjamin Sitkowski. Okay, so I should go through my brief presentation in this case. I just wanted to be clear. Yes, yes, you should do okay. your presentation. Good. And then we will take your vote and hopefully be done by 1230. Okay, I timed this, so I'll be quite brief. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Benjamin Sitkowski. I'm a transportation planner with CTPS. And I wanna just briefly uh, go through the work scope for the parking policy and trip generation study. This is an MPO 5303 contract with a UPWP funded budget of $20,000 and the intention to complete work within five months of commencement to provide some Brief background information, this study seeks to build upon two prior UPWP trip generation studies, one of which uh, Drashti will discuss at a later date, as we just confirmed, and the other was the UPWP's innovation in estimating trip generation rates from fiscal year 2020. This study conducted research into innovative practices in the analysis of trip generation. And moving forward, this project that we're discussing now seeks to supplement this work also by that work that has been conducted by MAPC regarding parking availability, such as through the perfect fit parking study. Uh, the study measured actual supply and demand for residential parking in around Boston. And so the goal of our study today is to explore through a policy-based framework, the relationship between the amount of um, parking available at development sites and automotive ownership and usage included in geographic areas with adequate public transit capability and connectivity. Subsequently, we hope to be able to identify innovative approaches to using parking policy in order to improve overall chip generation rates in the area. 
In order to achieve these goals, staff are going to conduct a series of literature reviews on the existing bodies of literature regarding the relationship between parking policy and trip generation rates. And additionally, staff will also review existing data sets, including those from the American Community Survey and a MAPC's aforementioned Perfect Fit study. This will be done in order to review similarities and differences in parking trends uh, between our region and other regions in the rest of the country. Finally, on the deliverable side of things, staff will generate in tandem both a white paper and a set of graphical fact sheets. The goal is that both of these deliverables should be able to effectively share findings with municipalities that, that, that can then be used to uh, present information in order to support new parking policies in the respective areas. Um, I believe everyone has access to the scope of work document, so uh, there is more information available regarding budget allocation and the labor timeline within exhibits one and two. And that's all for me. Thank you very much. Any questions for Ben? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Can I get a okay. motion? Oh, Ben Diggins, do you have a question? You're going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion. Just trying to beat Wait. Mr. Gain to it. <laughs> Go ahead, Lynn. I make the motion to approve this work scope. It's an exciting work scope. Thank you. You're welcome. Brian? Uh, I would like to second uh, Chairman Diggins' uh, motion, please. Thank you. The motion having been made and seconded, please call the roll. All right. Uh, David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. Uh, might be having a technical issue. Might just want to circle back. Okay, uh, John Romano. John Romano, yes. Jillian Linnell. Jillian Linnell, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Allison Felix. Allison Felix, yes. Brian Kane. Brian Kane, yes. Leonard Diggins. Leonard Diggins, yes. Bill Conroy. Bill Conroy, yes. Jim Fitzgerald. Jim Fitzgerald, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Daniel Amstutz. Daniel Amstutz, yes. Todd Corrine. Todd Corrine, yes. Uh, Tom Ben. Tom Ben, yes. Darlene Wynn. Sorry, am I here? Yeah, I have to step away, so I'll abstain. Abstain. Uh, Melissa Tentaculous. Uh, Jennifer Constable. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I was oh. here. Yep, just switching back. Thank you. Uh, okay. That's a yes. Yes, vote. Okay, uh, Jennifer Constable. Jennifer Constable, yes. Steve Olenoff. Steve Olenoff, yes. And I will circle back to see if John Bouchard has returned. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, no, that calls the roll, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So that motion, motion carries. carries. Motion carries. Thank you. So we are going to delay the presentation on trip generation research and the presentation on the 2021 sub-regional priority roadway studies to a future meeting. Um, staff will be possibly um, trying to figure out whether it necessitates us actually having our meeting on May 5th. So there's a reason you can't make the May 5th meeting, please let staff know. We're not definitely scheduling the May 5th meeting yet, but just want everybody to know there's a chance now that we will decide to meet on May 5th rather than overload future agendas. Any other items come before the MPO at this time? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to adjourn? Please state your name for record when making the motion. Bill Conroy.
Can you unmute Bill, please? Oh, there you oh, go, Bill. Sorry, sorry. I make a motion to adjourn. Sorry. Thank you, Tom Vint. Second that motion. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Without objection, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Bye, guys.